Welcome to this edition of Keeping It Real, panel discussions with entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders who have shared their business stories in our guest blog and join us to discuss topics trending in business. Today, our panel guests are innovators, collaborators, and small business owners who have successfully made the transition from corporate leader to business owner. Our topic is creating a sense of self, your personal image, with some health and wellness tips. And I'd like to introduce you to our panel. We have with us Nicole Mannion, who is the founder of Muskoka Aesthetics and Spa and Muskoka Beauty, obviously from the Muskokas in Ontario. We also have Michelle Mahar, who's a jewelry designer from Toronto, Ontario, and Rod Williams, who's a certified personal trainer and acting coach from Ottawa, Ontario. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. I think we're talking about a really hot topic, right? Everyone, every article that I pick up in, in whatever magazine I'm reading, there seems to be a heck of a lot of news about self-care. So I'm going to start our conversation today by asking Michelle, what do you, how would you define self-care? What does that mean for you and the people that you work with in your business? Um, I would say that self-care is, is, it comes down to putting yourself first, which is quite difficult. Uh, I find, especially for women, to put yourself first, but you have to take that time, especially with the distractions that we have, uh, most of all being our phones, I'd say. Our phones are always distracting us, and, and, and uh, so we do need to put ourselves first and take some time out away from away from the phone for one thing um mm -hmm. out in nature is also really good a really good way to to practice self-care um just being out in nature alone touching the tree putting your feet on the ground the grounding you get the energy from the earth and and you're able to connect with uh with the earth it's it's that's fantastic for you you know what? I I don't know if you guys remember, but there was the movie Pretty Woman where um, she takes Richard Gere, who is this, you know, corporate um, pirate, and he buys companies and then divides them up and sells them. So he's not really connected with, you know, his his personal aura. And she takes him out into on a picnic and makes him take off his shoes and walk around in the grass. <laughs> so, you know what? That's a really great. That's the first thing that came into my mind when you said that, Michelle, I was thinking of that movie. Oh. Um, now, Nicole, give us some insight because in a spa environment, I'm sure you're dealing with folks of all ages, you know, men and women. Is there been a change at all in people's attitudes about self-care? I would say so. I think just that personal connection, actually being able to, like what we're doing today, obviously we're all from different areas and doing this virtually, but people just want connection. They want to be able to sit down and actually talk to someone and that physical touch, you can't you can't fake that over zoom like a robot can't do it it's something that we can only do within ourselves and the industries that we're in um i think just people want to hear how you're doing people truly care and that's something we take pride in whether we're a very wide range fall when it comes to our mature clients and our even we're doing kids minis and petties right and just making sure they're comfortable and they're happy with what their what their decisions are and just having those meaningful conversations. And it's great because they're not just clients to us, they're part of our growing family. And we sincerely care. Even during lockdown and the pandemic, we were calling clients, some of our, our widows were alone. And to what we were talking about before this conversation today, is just checking in how people were doing and making them know that they're not just like a number in our schedule. They are like humans. And that I find with clients coming in and out, they're just so happy. They're just happy to be back. They're not, they're not going to ever take getting their nails or things done for granted. For granted. Day. Isn't that the truth, right? Yeah. No, now Rod, you know, you're a certified personal trainer and an acting coach. And I know that you've combined your skills during the pandemic to reach a whole new uh, demographic. Now, are you finding, you know, what intrigues me is the, obviously as a trainer, everybody wants to look good. So the feel good, look good concept. But how does that translate into, into the acting? Because you really have to get people to tap into their emotions. So is there something that you can share with our viewing and listening audience that works when you're connecting those would-be actors with that whole emotional experience with self-care? 
Yeah, I think like as a caregiver, you put self-care like at the top of the list when you're dealing with clients. And I think that um, the, the thing that comes to my mind is uh, the connection piece that we both talked about, uh, that we all talked about, but also the, the piece of, um, when I think about self-care, I think about people doing things for themselves the way they need to do them. So it's like you don't need to follow every single diet or fitness trend. Just do the thing that works for you. And if you need a professional's help, seek a professional's help. Same thing with the acting coaching. It's, uh, it's, it, you, you can, you can, you know, you can put people through their paces, both as an acting coach and as a personal trainer and as a life coach, but you do have to cater it to uh, what the needs of the person is and take that care as we've been talking about um, to address their issues in the way that they need. Yeah, that's so Otherwise, true. Otherwise, it just feels like overwhelming, you know? Yeah, it misses the mark, right? Yeah. Like you you just can't, you can't connect the dots. Can't be cookie now, cutter. No, that's very true. Now, you know, what I love about Michelle's business is she's a jewelry designer. So, of course, you know, we're all looking at finding new ways of connecting and creating a personal image. I mean, I don't know about you folks, but the people in my network are really happy to get out of, you know, the dressed at the top and in the bottom, they're in their, you know, their Lululemons or track pants or whatever it is that they're wearing. So when it comes to image now, are we finding that when folks are going out into public, whether we're networking or they're coming into your businesses or, you know, perhaps not for you, Rob, they're meeting you in the gym, so they're still going to be in those workout clothes. But are you finding that there's a different attitude towards their personal image? the way that they want to look. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, like, I, we've changed even our dress codes at work because I find when everyone came back after lockdown, they didn't know how to dress anymore. And it was hard to know who was working at the spa and who was there for a spa treatment. So we ended up bringing in having like, because we are more of a medical grade spa now. And so we decided to bring in more of like that scrub, like that Medi look with the name tags as well. So people could address the girls by their names and remembering their names. But <laughs> Yeah, I feel like even walking around town now, I used to wear heels and the whole nine yards. And now I feel like people look at me funny if I'm dressed up like that. But I think it, you got to think about yourself and right. kind of similar to what we were saying too, is like customizing it to yourself and what, what makes you feel good. Some people feel good wearing, yeah, their, their workout clothes because that's what makes them feel confident. It might be for me, maybe wearing some bright colors or something. Like everyone has their unique style and everyone might be going through something or a transition you just never know what their what their lifestyle is bringing them to or where they're going everyone's so busy now too so making sure that they're they're just happy with whatever whatever makes them feel good michelle are you finding that there's a difference like our you know big chunky jewelry was the big thing you know a few years ago is it now have you found a difference in the styling are people looking for something different in their personal image um i think that uh but you know, going along with what Nicole was saying, people want to be more comfortable now. I do like we, I was just at a lunch with um, 50 entrepreneurial women on Monday and uh, it, people don't want to wear heels anymore. It really, uh, you know, unless it's a, it's, 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 you know, a, a wedding or special evening gala or something like that. People want to be more comfortable. And uh, so you don't see women wearing heels the same way. At least, at least, you know, the entrepreneurs that I know. Right. And you're um, in Toronto as well. So that's like, that's. Yeah. Like, Even more yeah. shocking, right? Yeah, exactly. The true, yeah. Um, yeah. And, but in terms of uh, jewelry as well, that's the other thing. Well, people actually are happy to kind of put something on and get dressed up again too, though. Mm -hmm. People are taking more care into into getting ready for for events because it's it's like I was saying to Trish beforehand uh it's people are making decisions whether or not they want to go to events more they're more discerning now right it's not yeah. just I'll go here I'll go here I'll go here it's it's they want to go somewhere that they're you know going to really connect with people and right. and so they're taking their their own image into into, into that consideration uh, yeah. consideration there as yeah. well yeah you know both of you have mentioned something really interesting and that is the confidence that comes with the clothes that we wear 
And this ties in really well with rot because you're really giving people an opportunity to elevate their self-confidence. Have you noticed any changes at all within your client base, Rod, since, you know, we've all been through a lot in the last few years? Well, two things. Um, the first thing is that there was a little bit of a focus on fashion. And I was thinking like, normally you'd think that people would come to the gym in shorts and Lululemons and t-shirts and tank tops and that sort of thing. But I have seen people come in full on jeans and dressier wow. shoes and a ton of makeup and it's like why why like that's, <laughs> that's not the appropriate attire you know you're going to sweat that makeup off right yeah like, exactly <laughs> so but I mean I think that on my end um you know I worked for big uh, companies before the pandemic and started my business during the pandemic and what I can tell you is that in the last like we've lost like two and a half years and now we're coming out of it in the third and I know that people are concerned about their parents and concerned about health but also about the way they're living their lives and also about getting back to life at their at the fullest that they can possibly be so it 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 was about losing weight and gaining muscle a lot before the pandemic with people but i'm finding with my personal training clients it's about life and how can we how can we live it to the best of our ability that's a really interesting point yeah. because you know what we've heard from nicole and from michelle is that there's a, an attitude change. There's a shift. There you know, is. We're making a different shift from perhaps what we used to value before. We've, right? We're, we're putting a different mm -hmm. emphasis now. Now it's more on how do I feel? How do I connect? Yeah. You know, when I go to this event, how do I feel when I'm with that group of people? Which is basically what Michelle was saying, right? Like, yeah. I need to have a feeling of connectivity when I'm with these folks. And if mm -hmm. I'm not, well, I I'm, I'm just going to do something else. Right. And, and I think that's a really valid point that we've all found that we're changing our priorities. There's a real shift in, and an attitude adjustment in what we're doing in terms of what is, what does self-care look like? So I'm going to put you all on the spot and I'm going to ask you for yourself personally. I mean, you know, you're in business to help other people feel great about the way that they look and to have a healthy attitude and perspective about self-care. What do you do personally for self-care that helps you to connect and de and recharge your batteries? Nicole, what would what would what's your go-to thing? I would say routine is for me. Um, I feel like during we we're kind of talking about the pandemic, we were affected as well for pretty much two years of lockdown with the spa industry and. Right. I am not good without a routine. That was something that really hit me was getting up and going in the morning, having a mission, having my checklist of things to do and just being out and about with people. And I feel like that was something that for me was the routine was everything and, mm -hmm. and really owning the, I'm a very like type A personality when it comes to my structure and how I like things and knowing what I'm going into each day. And there I was like, what is my what is my meaning going into okay. this routine every morning? So yeah. I would say that was definitely something that when you were asking us questions earlier on in the week, that was something I really sat with this week. And I was like, I think mine would definitely be routine having that as part of a part of who I am. You know, that helps mental health too, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's the structure of having the familiarity and the familiarity creates confidence. So we're kind mm -hmm. of like, it's a cyclical kind of thing, right? Yeah. Uh, what about, what about you, Rod? What's your go-to? I mean, you know, we're always asked as a, also being a, a certified personal trainer like yourself, you know, folks are like, oh, it's really easy for you, you know, you know, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm, I, I had a bag of chips last night. I shouldn't have eaten that, you know, like, or um, I, I didn't do my workout this morning because I just couldn't get out of bed. So what is it that you find that you're doing to tap into the, the creative energy that you need to recharge? Um, well, routine is definitely one of them. Structure, for sure. Definitely working out and taking care of myself. You know, if I lived a life of Big Macs and Oreo cookies, it'd be a different story. Like my business might suffer a little bit, right? So I do take care of myself physically. But what I am finding for sure is, especially since the pandemic, is um, uh daily things that are creative for me as well need to have that need to have that and um really figuring out when in the course of the week i'm going to have alone time um because oh. that's just needed to just regroup when all the chaos is around you all week long just figuring out when you're going to have doses of alone time super important for me well, that's a really good point because you know that would definitely have not been on my list because i live alone so during the pandemic i had way too much alone time mm. 
there was way too much time to, and I couldn't concentrate to read and all of those sorts of things. So I think it really depends too on the, on the dynamic of your family unit. You know, it, it, what, what did they say? There was been an explosion of people buying dogs and cats, right? Mm -hmm. Because people who lived alone were looking for some kind of companionship. And so they ended up getting animals because they're, you know, our wonderful best friends. I mean, I used to laugh and think I had the smartest plants on the street because, you know, I'm walking around the house talking to myself. And <laughs> so I started using my plants as an excuse to kind of say, you know, try to have that one way conversation. But, you know, I, I think the real, the, what's interesting is the string of physical and mental connection that we've heard from from both you and Nicole is like, you know, yes, we need the structure. Yes, we need to eat properly and, you know, make sure that we're giving our body the right fuel. But that feeds into our confidence and the way that we carry ourselves when we go outside as well. Right. Michelle, how do you tap into your uh, recharging of the batteries? Well, I I'm kind of the same along the lines of what Rod was just saying. I need some time alone. Um, I just need, especially if I've been out with other people, like I said on Monday at this lunch with the women, I, I just, uh, absorbing all their energy, I need some time uh, to just be alone. Um, and so I find that I need that almost on a daily basis, but especially if I've been out in any environment with a lot of people, it just I can I'm picking up their energy and I need to I need to have my alone time. Um, the other thing I've done been doing the last oh I don't know three years I guess now is at the end of my shower I do um, a cold water like uh, the Wim Hof. Uh, uh, well, I mean yeah. it's not the same because I'm not plunging in a ice right. bath, but I do cold water for the last two minutes of my shower. Um, it's better for your hair as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, I've been doing that after listening to a couple podcasts talking about it. I, I do that on a consistent basis. And eventually I will go to the uh, oh, plunge <laughs> to yes. try the plunge. <laughs> we'll see you out there doing the polar that what, what yeah. they call that the polar plunge in, on yeah. New Year's Day or something. Yeah, yeah. I, that definitely won't. I'll take your picture, Michelle. <laughs> I, I definitely won't do that with you, but I'll take your picture. Well, that's Same. really great advice. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's like really that. big in health and fitness right now. I'm not there yet. Yeah, it's totally is. I mean, even if you look at your Instagram, I've seen some people, you know, that I follow and they're doing these little, you know, they bought these almost looks like a barrel and yeah. they're filling it, right? Filling it up with water. Bought one. Yeah, putting ice in it and then jumping it. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you know, you need to rethink that just a wee bit. Like, you know, now we're in a really confined place. I mean, I would get claustrophobic in that little barrel with all that ice. And <laughs> I just not, just not for me. Definitely not for me. I'm with, I'm with uh, Rod on that one. Yeah, that won't be high on my list. Now, when we're out networking and we're, we're meeting with people and we're making these connections, have you found that you've personally had to change your focus in terms of your leadership skills? Because one of the things that I think that we're finding is perhaps we're all a little bit more empathetic, right? We're trying to make connections with people and we can empathize. I mean, I mean, Nicole already mentioned, you, you have no idea what's going on in somebody's life, right? You pass them on the street, they're looking a little under the weather and you think, wow, like what, what's going on with her? I mean, she always looks so great and put together, but we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. So have you found that you've had to change your leadership skills at all with your teams, with your colleagues, with your clients in terms of how you approach making those connections? Rod, have you have you found that there's you, you've had to really kind of reassess your own approach with some of your clients? It's an interesting question, you know, and I think a lot of that for me personally has to do with the fact that I was working in the large clubs before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, uh, the clubs were shut and I was trying to start a business, but also had a lot of time to just have a lot of solitude. And it made me realize I always knew it, but I, I that I'm very, very introverted. Um, but coming out of the pandemic, it's, it's uh, you know, the combination of being an introvert and then dealing with a huge number of people in the club environment. Now where I have this business where I can kind of control how many people I can see, it's made me a lot more outgoing and it's given me a, a stronger ability to connect. And um, I, I think that's just, it, the change has just happened as a result of the last few years. And it's just happened very organically. And, you know, starting a business 
can or cannot give you a lot of confidence. It's just given me a lot of confidence to um, to connect with people in a very, very different way. Um, so mine is very situational just because of the last few years. Right, right. Yeah, but a re- really valid point, though, because there's a lot of people who are in the same situation, right? Working from home offices now, you don't have the camaraderie of the water cooler to kind of, you know, connect with the people that you used to see on a daily basis. So that's a really good point. Michelle, have you found that you've had to make a different kind of connection with your clients? Is is a, there a leadership skill that you've had to change or hone in on in the last uh, while? Well, I guess I, I, like you were saying, along the lines of um, empathy, it's much more important, I think, um, mm-hmm. than before. Being compassionate, because you don't know what anybody's been through uh, the past three years. Some people have um, been through a lot, and others, it, it hasn't been, uh, you know, as difficult, although we've all been through a lot. And I don't think people realize some people don't realize what you've been through and how it impacts your mental health. Um, mm-hmm. And it, and so you really need to be compassion, compassionate and, and care more about how people are feeling. That's a really good point. Yeah. About, that, that's a really good point because we just, we seriously do not know what's going on behind the scenes. Right. We put on, I, I always call it putting on the game face. You know, when you meet with your clients, you put on your game face because you know, you, you, try to leave all your baggage at the door when you walk into or meeting with a client or you're going into your place of business because, you know, nobody wants to hear your stuff. Everybody's got stuff. Right. Um, but it's making us a lot more aware. Or maybe we're a little bit more open about the stuff. You know, if you say to someone, oh, you know, are, are you feeling okay today? Or, you know, you can notice that someone's maybe acting a little out of character. Maybe we're becoming a little bit more with the empathy also comes the transparency, perhaps. Um, that that may be something that uh, is certainly something that I've noticed in my network. Yeah, now, w- I, I think people want to share more too. Yeah, very as true. Well. And, yeah, uh, you know how you would normally go up to you know ask somebody how they're doing. They say, "Oh, fine." Oh, and, fine. Yeah, exactly. But now you want to share and and probe a bit more. Yeah, very true. And people true. are willing to, but uh, especially if you share first. What yes, you, you know, feel. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Very true. What about you, Nicole? Have you found that, that you've had to change your leadership skills with your team? Um, I would say like to the point to what you're saying with clients too, like I find as an esthetician or in like in the spa industry, I say we're not just estheticians, we're also therapists because the room we're in a room by ourselves. I'm sure you experience the same with uh, personal training and things like that as well. But I feel like people are, they they're willing to share more than ever before. And I find that with the leadership for myself, like I have 11 to 12 girls on staff at all times. And it is sometimes overwhelming because I, I try to be that cool, calm, collected boss. I, I kind of call myself a robot. I've kind of become numb to a lot of outside noise because if I got upset about every little thing that happened, I would not be in business anymore. So I feel like sometimes like life things happen to everyone, but I want to be able to be that leader that they're okay to come to talk to me. They're okay to feel like they can call me in the middle of the night and say, I can't, something just came up. This is what's going on. Can you help me deal with it? I want to be able to not just be their boss. I want to be able to be that leadership role model for them, whether they're opening their own business or they feel comfortable that they're okay to tell me that they're going to go for another career opportunity, or they're going to start a family or things like that, that happen. I just want to be able to have those conversations with them without them thinking I'm this big, scary boss that's just going to fire them from little things that could happen within their life. You know, that's such a great point, because I think each one of you have actually alluded to being a mentor, right? The fact that we're more open with our clients, with our colleagues, with our teams, uh, mentorship now more than ever is coming to the forefront. And that's really what you're talking about, being an amazing mentor with your team. Now, now, Rod, you know, you're in a different situation where people are looking to you. Uh, they're probably perhaps maybe a little bit more open. But are you finding that there's a threat of mentorship even with the, your colleagues and your business colleagues that you're connecting with? Um, yes. Yeah, I would say, you know, either I'm looking to them for mentorship or they're looking to me for mentorship. You know what I mean? Which is 
totally different like that that never happened to me before right. the last few years so it's uh it's always a different feeling where I'm seeking somebody to be my mentor and somebody's seeking me to be their mentor it's a it's a it puts you on another level mentally 100 percent and um you know you, you try not to you know I, I try not to get too much in my head about it and to Michelle's point like I think it's important to uh one of the biggest things I think happened before the pandemic was making up stories about people in your head when you see them and they come to you and that sort of thing. And now I think post pandemic, that's, that's really, really uh, dissipated because you don't know what people have gone through and it gives you a, a better ability to connect. Right. So, um, which makes mentorship easier. I suppose. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, Michelle, did you find in your conversations when you were in this large group of uh, other entrepreneurs on Monday, did you feel that any of the conversations had more of a mentorship kind of tangent to them and in, in terms of what you were sharing and the things you were talking about? Um, yes, I would say so. But what I would also say is there's a really strong sense of community now. Um and the importance of, of community yeah. where I, uh, it was there before, but it seems really strong now, just, just the sense of community and uh, us, uh, you know, women coming back together after a while, yeah. um, uh, you just felt, you really felt the sense of community and, and supporting one another and being allies for each other and, and, you know, providing advice and, a sounding board. I mean, really. That's yeah, yeah. Down to. Yeah, those are all really great Everybody, points. You know, learning how to listen. I think people are listening better than before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and, and you know, to your point, you made it earlier about saying, you know, we need to take and I think we've all sort of alluded to the fact that some of us need some personal time to recharge the batteries, right? You need to reflect on where you're going, what you've been maybe doing a bit more of a diagnostic on your week, right? And then saying, well, what do I want to change for next week? How do I want things to look different? So I think that, that the sense of community is really important, because we're all looking to make heartfelt connections, right? Like we really want to ensure that the people that we're connecting with, I was in a networking event recently and somebody said, okay, there's 3 billion people on the planet. What's the likelihood that the four of us are together today talking about self-care? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about that, you're mm -hmm. like, wow, that's like a whole other level of, Great you know, perspective. yeah. When, when you think about that, you know, I don't believe that our connections are by chance. I think that there's a, a reason why we make these connections. And I think it's to Michelle's point where we're looking for a sense of community. We, we connect with like-minded people. We appreciate and respect their level of expertise. So we look to them for advice and to share stories, really. Um, and that's a really wonderful point because the, the three of us or the four of us have come together. You're sharing, couldn't be from different backgrounds, right? We've got you know, a jewelry designer, we've got a spa owner, and then we've got a personal trainer and acting coach. I mean, those are really very different areas of expertise, but how similar, mm -hmm. how similar are our experiences, which is really very cool. One of the things that we do in the guest blog is we asked everyone to share three words of advice. And in these panel discussions, I would like to end our conversation, give you an opportunity to wrap up your thoughts by sharing one word of advice with our viewing and listening audience. So I'm going to start with Rod and ask you to share your one word of advice. What word of advice would you give to the folks who've spent some time with us today in terms of how they can increase or amplify their own self-care and personal image? Uh, consistent, just consistency. I think consistency is important whatever it is that you're doing. So if you are consistent at getting eight hours sleep, do that. If you're consistent at going for a hike for three times in a week, do that, you know? Um, and I think do the consistency your way until it doesn't work and then seek advice as to other things that might work for your lifestyle. And, you know, not, not I think not following trends is, is, is very, very key um and be consistent in that mindset i'm not going to follow this trend it doesn't really work for me i'm going to do this instead like right. your own consistency is 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 important because that's what keeps moving you forward that's a really good point thank you for sharing that michelle um my one word would be me because 
uh, I think the connotation has always been that, you know, that's it, it's selfish to think about yourself or to be concerned about yourself. But we have to, as the saying goes, you can't pour from an empty cup. And if you don't take care of yourself first, then your business isn't going to go anywhere. You need to take care of yourself so that you can be there for others as a mentor and also to support your clients. So me would be my word. That's a really great word. Thank you for sharing that. And Nicole? I would say positivity would be mine. Um, I feel like there's always the woe is me, oh, life's so hard, oh, this part of entrepreneurship or even just being a single person on this planet, you just think everything's raining down on you and you get past that milestone or challenge maybe that's happening right now and you think, okay, I'm on, you kind of surpass it and you're like, wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought, right? So having that positivity to move forward and very similar to what Michelle was saying too with it being about yourself and and the positivity, what you can bring to the table as a mentor or someone in your family, being kind of that role model that people just think of you as like the light and that energy that they need or someone that they can reach out to when they're having a hard time and just being that sounding board for yourself and for other people around you as well. Well, you know, I would like to thank each of you for sharing your expertise, because I think that there's a thread of similarity in every of the stories that you've shared today. But not only that, but you've given us uh, a lot of things to think about. And I think the authenticity of where you're coming from uh, is actually really contributing to not only the self-care for yourself, but the advice that we've shared with others. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today and sharing your heartfelt stories with our viewing and listening audience. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. We appreciate your honesty and commitment to storytelling, each and every one of you. And I really appreciate the fact that you've contributed to the guest blog and you've taken a leap of faith to join me in this panel discussion. Um, and I really do believe that we've given our viewing and listening audience some things to think about in helping others create a healthy sense of self. So thank you so much for that. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series. And if you're interested in sharing your business story, visit our website at shareyourstories.online. If you'd like to connect with one of our panel guests, you'll find their story and contact information in the description portion below. In the meantime, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you're on the move, the podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. And I'd like to thank you for joining us and we look forward to meeting you next time with another episode of Keeping It Real. Thanks very much, everyone.